like women like to be cheated on. Did anyone tell you they like being cheated on? I mean, they didn't say that, but their actions... Men are the superior beings. <sighs> Sorry, feminists. I don't know what to tell you. In a world that is as cruel as it is deceitful, tragedy is ignored in pursuit of a happy mind. Those who seek more venture beyond the veil. They venture into the vortex. On the condition we defend all men while simultaneously bashing all women. Your statement that 16-year-old minors are more attractive than adult women. Do I think Pearl is a... No. I think she's really fucking stupid. We don't need personal pronouns. I don't think it's kind to allow people to live in delusion. I'm doing this for money. Women divorce for no reason all the time. Wait, you just need to talk honestly, to more people. It's all about money to me. You guys aren't going to, to stop I, me. I do think men and women cheating is different. The fact that people are making these videos is my own fault. And the situation that I'm in is my own fault. Thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. More about them in a little bit. They criticize me at all costs. I know maybe that hope is lost. I'll be the villain if that's what you want. I'll be the demon if that's what you need. What if you spent your whole life wanting nothing more than a relationship and then you went down a career path that would ensure that no one would ever love you? She has made her entire career catering to those type of men, and they don't even want <laughs> Well, with seven-something billion people in the world, I doubt that'll ever happen to you. Don't worry. But the one person that it's most likely to happen to is Pearl Davis, known online as just Pearly Things. And like, I know she has always wanted to get married and start a family, so she would ask me for advice on that. Marriage in 2023 isn't marriage. It is not marriage today. What is like, it? Like, like it, it's something else. A real wife does not get divorced. She doesn't believe in it. And she will make the relationship work at all costs, even at the expense of herself. Just find a good woman and marry young. And these guys say, okay, let me go do it. And then she takes the kids and ruins his life. I mean, don't, don't wait till, you know, 35 to get married. Get married as young as you can. Right, get uh, married as young as you can. Yeah. To the family and friends closest to Pearl Davis, or as they knew her, Hannah Pearl Davis, Pearl was not always the surly and embittered internet figure directing anger and outrage towards the female population, which she just so happens to be a part of. It's a performance. She's acting. She's getting everybody riled up. All of a sudden, she's like, I'm gonna do red pill content to the extreme. Till one day, virtually overnight, Pearl became swept up into the undercurrent of the manosphere. Who is Pearl Davis or just pearly things? And what was her role in this massive web of rot that eats away at our online culture and adds to our divide and our vitriol? Why did a person who had a happy family, a bright future, a path paved for her, throw it all away for a platform to spew negative rhetoric? The biggest female voice of the red pill movement. You say things like women shouldn't be allowed to divorce their husbands, that men should demand a DNA test at the delivery of their children. You say things like women shouldn't be allowed to vote. There should be mandatory DNA testing at birth. No. I don't know why you, okay. Because I, it's pr calling my wife a whore. Ultimately leading to her reputation being damaged forever. Her image forever hated by most people on all sides of the aisle. You, you do everything that you can to throw women under the bus for the sake of looking good in front of men. And those men go online and say stuff like this. Do you know why Pearl is available? Because even though she says the right things that men resonate with, 
She's masculine. Feminine women do not go online and sit on podcasts and argue with men all day long. And ultimately leading to her demonetization on the YouTube platform. Her internet virality collapsing in on itself like a dying star. An enemy to everyone has a friend in no one. But when their eyes are set on lining their pockets, how long will it take for them to notice or care? And how much will they burn along the way in their path to destruction? I Hi friends and internet acquaintances, welcome or welcome back to another video on my channel covering controversial internet figures and the harm that they inflict during their time on the internet. If you like that sort of content, don't forget to subscribe and if you like this video, please give it a like and comment down below what other controversial internet figures you'd like me to cover. Now before we get into this video, let's talk about the sponsor. This year, a new financial goal of mine has been to budget smartly so that I can save enough money to be able to travel more. Something that I haven't really been able to do much of and I'm hoping to get a chance to do more in the next coming years. But being able to track multiple expenses and income streams and reduce monthly expenses can be a challenge to tackle all on my own. Well, today's sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. My partner and I have been using Rocket Money since the summer of 2023 and have found the platform to be such a useful tool for a variety of financial needs. As you know, if you've been a longtime viewer on my channel and have seen my journey firsthand with Rocket Money, I love using Rocket Money to lower my bills because you can simply upload a photo of your bill, tap a few buttons, and Rocket Money will negotiate your bills for you. From internet service to cable and phone bills, Rocket Money also helps you set budgets, analyze your spending habits, and create a custom budget that works with your lifestyle. Automatically monitor your spending by category, and then get notifications when you've exceeded your limits. You can also set up smart savings. Choose the amount and the frequency, and Rocket Money will automatically deposit money into a smart savings account and you can withdraw anytime. All of these features keep me on track with my financial goals and make me feel more secure in my finances, save more and spend less. Join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash cruelworldhappymind or click the link in the description to get started for free. That's rocketmoney.com slash cruelworldhappymind. And thank you so much to Rocket Money for continually supporting the channel. The harm of just pearly things and the hurtful rhetoric that she's spread has been rooted in red pull ideology and primarily the manosphere. So before we can talk about who just pearly things is as a person, it's important to address the topic of the manosphere and paint the tapestry of what the manosphere is and what role Pearl began to play in it. There's a wide debate about when the manosphere really began. I could talk in extensive length about how the history of the manosphere technically extends all the way to the 1970s as a sort of byproduct of the men's liberation movement, which as a movement was once a sort of ally to feminism, but then split off as a group and decided to sort of start their own band because they wanted to be picked, not associated with the feminists. You know, they were the original pick me's, if you will. This is a historic day. I've never seen a gathering like this out of concern for the general state of affairs for men and boys. So the men's liberation movement began advocating for the patriarchy, pushing to bring back male dominance. They always want to tell women that we are so special, amazing, and awesome at all times. You know, men used to bow down to kings, and now they bow down to women in marriage and when they propose. So the feminist programming has infiltrated and influenced relationship advice. This is an oversimplification, but just so you get the general picture. You know, the same sort of rhetoric that we hear now still, that men are too soft. They walk around in frills and skirts. We need to bring back strong men. Can we bring back masculine men? Even though men used to look and dress like this, or this, or this, that guy looks particularly strong. Though to be fair, he is hunched over 
a weapon of sorts and he has a sword on his person not many people carry swords around nowadays so maybe that's what they mean by bringing back strong men ways since the 1970s not a lot has changed well actually a lot has changed but most of these male movements are in agreement that somehow women are also the problem as they advance further and further on the battlefield of gaining human rights and become further and further educated and have access to more jobs and more degrees, therefore more income and more choices in turn, rather than having to marry the first last to give them an offer in order to have any sort of financial stability. Women are sharing space. This girl up and don't confuse suffrage with oppression. Everyone suffers. It's universal. How dare they? The audacity of women getting an education and wanting to choose who enters their nether regions? It used to go God, men, women, children, but now men submit to women's authority, which as you guys know, I believe that causes evil in the world. Now, while much of the general concepts since the men's liberation movement haven't changed too much, they have evolved with the evolution of the internet. Various online communities popping up and trying to tackle this horrifying problem. One of the most well-known online ideologies that sprung from this is the red pill. Red pill online forums and communities can be traced all the way back to the early 2000s. The red pill pill community is a reference to the matrix and red pillars believe that they've been awakened or enlightened to the truth of society and that they perceive the harsh realities of gender dynamics and that everyone else has misconceptions or has sort of illusions about gender and gender roles in society. T tell me what does red pill mean to you? Because I've heard you use that phrase a lot. You're part of the red pill community. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of people, I will say a lot of people have their own definitions of it. So people use it for different things. But I would say it's viewing the world the way it's supposed to be or like the way it is, not the way you're told it is. On the other side of the coin is the manosphere, which is characterized by these prominent influencers that have rose to fame and virality and internet popularity online through speaking to very similar issues, gender dynamics and traditionalism and anti-feminism. Feminism. There are quite a few categories of influencers in the manosphere, but in my opinion, the most popular ones are debaters. Well, oh, women by and large are fatter than men. No. Women, and if you go in the U.S., the woman's always fatter. In the U.S., <laughs> the average BMI for a man is 26.6, .6, and the average BMI for a woman is 26.5. Oh, I stand corrected. Podcasters. F*** out of here! Because when I was 18 years old, playing f***ing Halo, figuring out my life, no bitch would have taken me. So now that I'm up, you are down, f*** that shit. I'm going to exercise the leverage. Pickup artists, my personal favorite. It's a, no, not to give you a hard time. Sure. You know who hits on people? Betas. Okay? Betas do. You know, you know what alphas do? <laughs> they just win. That's it. They're just like, they just win. They don't need to do, it's just like, what's up? And then it's just on. <laughs> it's hey, I'm, hey, I'm Ari. Nice to meet you. What's up? And then it's just on. How can people be so wrong so confidently? The worst of them are the street interviewees, in my opinion, who usually target primarily women on the street, trying to catch them off guard in an interview, sometimes even seemingly targeting women in a not sober state in order to demean or embarrass them in a public format. I think men care about a woman's body count. Do you? People actually care about that If a man is asking me a body count, he can get fucked. Who gives a fuck? If a man is ever asking about your body count, you're talking to the wrong man. Think about the analogy. If one key can open many locks. I think that if a, no, if a woman is an analogy to you, then you're not ready to be talking to a woman. There are also sort of branches branching off of the manosphere. And while there can be a lot of debate whether or not someone is or isn't a manosphere influencer, in this video, I'll define manosphere influencers as those who have identified as such. The article in the conversation explains the allure of the manosphere to young internet users. The manosphere appeals to its audience because it speaks to the very real lives of young men under the above factors. 
fears, romantic rejection, alienation, economic failure, loneliness, and a dim version of the future. We are just warning you of what female nature is. There are people who have made an entire career off of easy, hateful content that garners outrage and negative reception and creates virality simply because it's easily engaged with. It doesn't require any sort of critical thought. Therefore, people quickly react to it, which drives influencers' engagement up. And the Manosphere has become a massive cauldron for brewing problematic influencers who utilize this strategy. A really well-written article titled, Meet the Misogynistic Manosphere Influencers Proliferating Across Social Media has a great quote about Manosphere influencers. Manosphere influencers use their isolated and indoctrinated community members to profit, often selling self-help and guru-style assistance for a price and to keep a steady revenue stream. I think it's safe to say that Pearl has changed her business plan in order to make money off of the Manosphere. Now me, I'm not selling anything. Based on what I know through observation, her particular target audience is a male. This is where Pearl's content and marketing sits. She is constantly hitting pain points and triggers. The challenges and the pain points for her particular customer, client, and fan is not being heard, not being seen, not feeling valued, and not having access to women. In other words, influencers within the manosphere pander vulnerable men who are feeling isolated, alone, in need of help, pretending to be a resource when in reality, they see these vulnerable men as their resource for income. Pearl Davis exemplifies this perfectly. The Manosphere does not hate on women. It lets men know the reality of the situation. Men, we're here to help you. Give us your money. Give us your time. Give us your engagement. We're not going to send you on a path of more hate, more loneliness, more division after you waste all of your time, money, and effort engaging with our content. We're not going to suck the soul and life out of you so that you become more divided against women women, which ends up making your problem even worse. No, come to us. We'll help you. We're just letting you know the reality. So in theory, the Manosphere slowly transformed into a platform of influencers of somewhat varying ideologies, but all centered around, well, centering men. And these influencers are profiting off of men continuing to stay lonely and divided. Her entire channel's premise is to focus on the injustices against men and how women aren't empathetic enough to them. It's a simple fact, really, whether these influencers are just profiting off of ad revenue, whether they're selling books, doing tours, podcasts, or as lowly of a practice as shilling out needless and unnecessary advice courses for desperate people looking for love, wealth, connection. The fact of the matter is many influencers have found a way to make a lot of money off of the manuscript. And one of these influencers who stumbled onto the unlocked potential of the manosphere was the influencer Pearl. Men are the superior beings. <sighs> Sorry, feminists. I don't know what to tell you. Pearl credits the former beloved to the Manosphere and now past influencer Kevin Samuels for, well, influencing her and opening her up to the world of the Manosphere. Pearl credits Kevin for introducing her to the Red Pill community. What made you cross all the way over to Red Pill? Well, oh, I'll tell you why. It was Kevin Samuels was what kind of started to red pill me. And Pearl claims that Kevin Samuels' Manosphere rhetoric opened her up to a whole new world of Manosphere ideology. All high value men cheat. And I was so confused because my dad's a high, like, like, because they listed out the, like, the things that they have to be. And it was like, my dad was all of them except LinkedIn, because my dad doesn't have social media. They, they said, um, all high value men cheat and have mistresses. So I called my dad. I'm like, where are your Dad. The fact that Pearl was interested in the Manosphere through Kevin Samuels is an interesting part of this story, just in how it comes into play later on in this video. Much of what made Kevin Samuels so infamous is the content that he would make where he would ask women to rate themselves based on what he called their perceived 
actual marketplace value, which is a manosphere term for basically people's perceived physical attractiveness, likening people to rating economic products. Manosphere influencers often do this, comparing women to various inanimate objects. But why is it all about what we can offer? Why is it all because, about what we can... Because when, when, you're talk, when you're trying to sell a car, if you're trying to get married, right? And I, please, I'm not saying that women are cars. It's just an okay. analogy. But if you're trying to sell a car, you have to study the buyer and figure out what the buyers want. Okay, okay. She says she's not comparing a woman to a car, but she is comparing a woman to a car. But Samuels would go on in his content to critique women based on their physical appearance, what they were wearing, what they looked like, their weight, their age. Look like you are in excess of 200 pounds. So if I wanted a high value man, what do I do? Be reincarnated. The guys you want aren't asking you out. Get the fuck out of my phone. The rest of us do not have to suffer you. And most of Kevin Samuel's negative content was directed towards black women. See what I mean? This goes so deep for black women. You all think you're the exception to the rule, but, but your life has proven to you that you're not. So, well, it's just interesting that Pearl was so inspired by Kevin Samuel's content. In particular, out of all the different types of Manosphere content, Pearl zeroed in on Kevin Samuels and became inspired by his content. And his most popular content often heavily critiqued black women for their appearances. Let's sit on that for a moment. Again, something I think is important to point out as it'll come into play later on in this video. Not that it's not just important to point out in general, but regardless, it seems that Pearl saw something was missing in the Manosphere influencer world. It seems she was looking around and noticed, hmm, there's only men in the Manosphere world. I wonder why that is. Maybe I could be a woman Manosphere influencer. Makes sense, right? Whatever Pearl's reasoning was and logic was, Pearl capitalized on a scarce market and was able to become the known or the only woman influencer within the Manosphere space. She would listen to common Manosphere talking points and then regurgitate them on her own platform. Your husband isn't supposed to ask your permission. Your husband can do whatever he wants with the money. True submission is giving him complete control. Though Pearl often seemed sort of stiff and uncomfortable and uh, not as confident with the talking points compared to other known influencers within the Manosphere realm. Oh, Say actually, that, I think we should ban divorce too. Yeah, I think that should be banned. Yes. Okay, well, that's a little bit silly. You have to acknowledge that, right? No. Pearl would try talking about different Manosphere talking points with her family members who were not involved in the Manosphere. She would also try and talk about it with different friends and do street interviews, which were popular at the time. I think typically uh, uh, invest more into building a relationship with the man or the woman. The woman, of course. I mean, I, I grew up with this all the time. It's about like the guy doesn't treat me well. He's not nice enough. He's not doing he's not holding the door for me. And I've also been that guy who's done all of that and you are overlooked, overshadowed easily by the guy who treats you like and is an absolute douchebag. But it seems like most of Pearl's family and friends just did not care about the Manosphere as much as Pearl did. I guess I don't think it's that important. Like, I frankly- it is, But it is though. That is the most important thing to have growing up is to have two parents. It's to have a masculine and feminine influence. I just don't think it is. Pearl was completely consumed by the Manosphere echo chamber and didn't realize that no one else around her didn't seem to care as much or was as concerned about feminism destroying the planet as much as she was. It could be said that Pearl had become actively sucked into an echo chamber, a closed ecosystem where those involved reinforce one another's beliefs, circulating existing views without any opposing views, which can result in confirmation bias, where one is only finding information that supports or confirms their pre-existing beliefs. Echo chambers can increase social and political polarization and extremism, and Pearl's beliefs became more and more extreme as she closed herself off to any outside beliefs, became more and more isolated, with her family no longer understanding her beliefs. In the process of becoming this new version of herself, Pearl has lost lifelong friends. 
Pearl's ex-best friend Emily has been the most vocal online after Pearl publicly lied about Emily being too overweight to get pregnant. Once I had a friend who I told my husband and I were gonna be trying to have kids in 2023 and then she turned out to be like really crazy so I stopped being friends with her and then a year after that she told people that I was having fertility issues because of my weight to prove her like toxic agenda or whatever she does. This isn't just a woman thing. When people lie, they'll make an assumption. They'll have a little beast piece of information and then make a roundabout assumption. Emily's made a few TikToks about the situation and has claimed that her and Pearl were very close, but that once Emily noticed the drastic shift in Pearl's attitude towards women, she parted ways with her friendship with Pearl for the sake of her own mental health. We lived together for an entire summer. Look at that little Hannah banana. <laughs> we would go camp in the middle of nowhere. And like, look how kind she was before. Emily also called Pearl's online behavior disgusting, and Emily personally believes that Pearl doesn't truly believe what she's saying online and is doing it as a grift or is over-exaggerating her beliefs for the sake of monetary gain. But no, she was not always like this. She was completely normal. The stuff that she says now is shocking to me because it wasn't just like a progressive getting worse. It was like all of a sudden she's like, I'm gonna do red pill content to the extreme. Either way, both Emily and from what it seems through Emily's claims, the circle of friends that Pearl was involved with have completely disassociated themselves from Pearl. So her online content has had major consequences in her real life. So how did Pearl get here? Well, let's rewind a moment. Now that we know Pearl's trajectory into the Manosphere and the complicated and toxic world of the Manosphere that she found herself in, let's look back on where Pearl started understand how possibly she could have ended up on this path. As I stated earlier, Pearl was considered an average American person, a fairly wealthy family, and a bright future paved for her. But things are not always as they seem, and sometimes people who have everything still crave more. Anna Pearl Davis was born in Chicago, Illinois on November 6, 1996. She was raised in a pretty large 10-bedroom home with her nine siblings and parents. That's right, nine siblings and Pearl's parents names are Dan and Jennifer Davis. Tell them mom. <laughs> well, welcome to the Davis Sunny Acre. In these walls we raised a lot of kids and a lot of our friends kids I think have spent as much time as our own kids here so um, come on in and I'll show you what we have. Um, okay so this is the lobby. We have 11 different styles of doors, 11 different types of wood in the house and um, the house finished space I think is about 11,000 square feet. Ceilings are 9 feet 11 inches. Now as some of you probably know, being raised in a really large family can have some positives and some negatives, especially depending on the individual family. And depending on the child, some children can really enjoy larger families and other children will not enjoy the experience as much. As we've seen in tropes like Home Alone, in larger families families, parents may struggle to give each child individualized attention and may be a little bit more forgetful for the individual children, just due to the sheer number of siblings. Fighting for a large family can also put a significant financial strain on the parents. Sometimes there can be limited resources because of how many children have to share resources within a household, which can create a more competitive feeling between each child in the house, but also again, Again, this depends on the household. Pearl was also raised as a Roman Catholic, where she may have learned some of her traditional ideologies, gender roles from the Roman Catholic Church. I think religion's great. Like, I believe in God, I pray, you know, but there was just something weird about it. And I, and I seriously, I couldn't figure out what, but I would go, I remember sitting in Catholic school and they would have these chastity speakers come in and it would always be the same thing. Like the, the guy 
fight with the ran through chick. Historically, clergy leadership roles within the Catholic Church are reserved for men. Though there have been discussions and movements advocating for greater inclusion of women in leadership positions. While women have been excluded from ordained priesthood, they do have significant roles as nuns, sisters, and often engage in other forms of ministry, education, healthcare, and other social work within the church. That being said, traditionally, the Catholic Church has placed an emphasis on traditional gender roles. Pearl attended Marian Central Catholic High School, a private Roman Catholic high school in Woodstock, Illinois. In 2024, tuition rates per student range from $8,900 to $12,000 for one student, $15,600 to $24,000 for two students, and $20,000 to $36,000 for three students. That means that Pearl's parents, Dan and Jennifer, were likely paying upwards of $36,000 a year to send just three of their nine children to this Catholic high school. Multiply that by three for their nine children for however many years. It's a lot of money put into this private education for their nine children. But Pearl had a seemingly prosperous childhood where money was never an issue. She she grew up highly privileged. There's pictures of like the house she grew up in. It's like this huge ass mansion. Both of Pearl's parents were very, very successful with big careers of their own. Yes, that's right. Pearl's mother had a career of her own. She was not staying home, being a traditional submissive woman. The blasphemy. Both of Pearl's parents are founders of Davisware, a business management software company. The company website reads, Today, our team is spread across the globe with more than 150 employees in three different countries. In an even more shocking turn of events, Pearl's mother, Jennifer, served as the CEO of Davisware from 2019 to 2021, before she started her own business, B Exponential LLC, which is, in an even more shocking turn of events, a coaching program that provides a supportive environment for women to share their experiences, struggles, and triumphs while emphasizing the importance of self-care, mental and physical health, and personal fulfillment. Hey mom, how did you balance work and family life as an adult? And like, what strategies would you say work the best for you? So I think that the biggest thing that everyone needs to keep in mind is that you don't have a work life and a home life. You only have one life. It has to be 50-50 because balance means there's sway and things don't exactly happen the same every day. So I think those two mindset changes are really important. But the problem is women want all the responsibility. We want to be in these hard jobs. We want to do all this stuff. And we want all of the freedom too and the privilege. But we can't, you can't have it both ways. As you can tell, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Just kidding. How did the messaging become so lost along the way? Our community at Be Exponential is a network of ambitious women who are carving out their paths in their careers and personal lives, striving to live a fulfilling and well-balanced life. Be Exponential is marketed as being built by women for women. Now, I don't know how great this course is, but it's still miles and worlds away from what Pearl is preaching on her platforms, which is mind-blowing. In 2021, Jennifer Davis was also a best-selling author for her book, Living Exponentially, Unlocking the Power of Every Moment in Your Business and Life. She was also the treasurer for United Nations for Women USA. According to their website, UN Women is the global nation's entity dedicated to gender equality and the empowerment of women. A global champion for women and girls, UN Women was established to accelerate progress on meeting their needs worldwide. So, Jennifer Davis represented a powerful and fierce woman in business, advocating for women who also take care of their mental health, as well as, in general, becoming an advocate for women and equality.
quality worldwide on Pearl's platform, she consistently downplays her mother's role in her parents' businesses. Not only did Jennifer Davis work in and excel in a male-dominated field, as men account for almost 92% of software engineers, but she also successfully helped build a company from the ground up. And on top of that, she raised and provided for 10 children. I mean, that sounds all impossible, could never be me. Don't know how anyone could do that and survive. But all Pearl has done instead of give her mother credit is consistently try and diminish her mother's accomplishments at Davisware. Pearl claimed that her father, Dan, was the true CEO of Davisware. When she was confronted with the fact that her mother was a leader in business by the H3 podcast, in a tweet she said, H3 is so stupid, they didn't realize my mom was the president of their company, but my dad was the CEO. That's not what Jennifer's LinkedIn says. My mom left her job as a teacher to work at the business my dad started. It was a family business. No matter what Jennifer Davis's job was before Davis Ware began, it doesn't diminish her role in helping the business succeed from the ground up. If the company wanted to give her a meaningless role, they could have just made her a board member and have been done with it. On top of that, while trying to downplay her own mother's accomplishments, Pearl may have accidentally claimed that her parents were committing fraud. That's right, Pearl would have rather claimed that her parents were committing fraud than give her mother any credit for the career and the work that she did. Pearl claimed on the H3 podcast that her parents only gave her mother a high position in the company just so that they could get a grant from the government. You know, I grew up in a family business too. So my, my dad hired people all the time, like he had over 200 employees. Wasn't your mom uh, the president? Was she the leader of the company? What was my, you're researching my family now, huh? Well, that's all public. No, my mom, my mom, I mean, I don't know what they titled it. Like, I don't know. Your think mom really was the care. president, I believe. But yeah, based on I, I mean, they might have, they might have titled it one thing or another. My mom did more of the marketing sales side. My dad did the engineering and the software. Okay. Um, I think they wanted to get some grant. So I think like they might have had her like, they might have they did that to get some grant from the government or something i don't remember but so in this yeah is that a crime <laughs> yeah you I probably shouldn't say that on air we can yeah. cut that parents out might not want. like that why is she trying to undermine her mother's accomplishments? Discredited her mom to make a point. That's wild. Truly, it's almost fascinating how a child can look at their parent and instead of becoming inspired by their accomplishments, become resentful for whatever reason. It makes you wonder what happened at home to create such a tragic tale of wrong messaging, clear mother issues, and child rebellion. On top of that, Pearl will consistently give credit and love towards her father for the life and the childhood that she's had, but never to her mother. A lot of your mothers do not want to see you succeed. They want to see you just as miserable as them, so you can be her emotional tampon the rest of her life. Because a lot of your mothers have failed again and again and again in relationship, and they do not want to see you succeed. From what I gleaned online, Pearl often credits her father for lavish gifts and fun activities given to the family. Number one, I'm sure I'm not a brokey. My dad yells at me for accounting every month and I have to like organize like business expenses versus personal. Um, so my dad does yell at me when I pull out cash when you can't see what you spend it on. She also reminds me of Mr. Krabs' daughter because he wants her to be a star and he's paying her way to do so. Being a little YouTuber is tough. I'm really tired of being broke, dad. I can't mooch off of you forever. In a Twitter post, Pearl claimed her father got her a road where she poses next to a street sign named Hannah Pearl Drive. In fact, around the time her TikTok first blew up, Pearl posted a video of her dad purchasing a giant water slide for the family. So she'll actively promote what her father does in her life, but never promotes anything that her mother does. 
My mom and dad went to different colleges. My dad told my mom, you can either move to me or find a different boyfriend. And she moved to him, quit, and then she ended up getting a teaching degree. She quit her teaching job to work for my dad and helped him build a multi-million dollar business. They had 10 kids. Despite Jennifer being the CEO of a multi-million dollar company, she stepped down in order to start Be Exponential so that she could dedicate her time to supporting women. In contrast, her daughter spends most of her time talking down to women and saying, really hateful things about women. Pearl has publicly preached that men are solely responsible for building society. For, I got a lot of hate this week for a tweet that I said that said, men make society run and women don't. She has tweeted, I genuinely think women are significantly less intelligent than men. There's a reason we are called the weaker vessel. Pearl believes that women do more damage in the workforce because they're too emotional in contrast to men who are more logical. Do you feel that sometimes you argue from emotion rather than like concrete facts? I'm a woman, so sometimes, yeah. Then why do you have a platform and why are you working? Just leave. She has tweeted, Women working is definitely like the Special Olympics, which is offensive on both sides of the coin. Trying to be hateful towards the Special Olympics as well as women. Pearl has even suggested that since women make up the majority of the education system, that they are to blame for the current failures of the education system. You know the crazy thing is, the industries that women run are the industries we complain about. So, healthcare is mostly women. We we're always complaining about how healthcare is not there to help you. Same with teachers, okay? Colleges, the, the institutions run by women, we all complain about. So one, the teachers are these single feminist women that don't have kids of their own, so they just try to indoctrinate yours. In the last hundred years, women have really taken over education. And you know what happened when we took over education? Everyone got dumber. This was the worst part. This was the funniest part. Two women cannot teach the way one man used to teach. That's how bad it is. The reasoning that she used to get there, the decline of the education system, that conclusion was reached without considering any outside factors and external reasons, like systemic problems, financial limitations in our education system and other aspects that have contributed to the decline. Not considering any other factors is so obtuse it feels deliberately obtuse. Rose also discussed removing women from the police force. If a woman is actually as strong and as physically capable as a man, I have no problem with her being in the police force. But when we start lowering standards to allow women to be in industries that they do not deserve, that is when I have a problem. Yeah, maybe, um, and women from the police force. If women's jobs disappeared from tomorrow, society would probably be fine. If men's jobs disappeared tomorrow, it would be rough out there, Pearl stated in a podcast. I can't really think of one job where women dominated and that we need. The point is, if women stopped working tomorrow, I actually, I think we would have an increase in efficiency, not a decrease. Again, Pearl's statement deliberately ignores important women-dominated industries in society. Nursing, physiotherapy, dermatology. On top of that, there was the famous study done where women refused to work for a day and within a few hours the society almost collapsed in october of 1975 90% of the women in iceland decided to go on strike they refused to work cook and look after their children for a day banks factories and some shops had to close as did schools and nurseries, leaving many fathers with no choice but to take their children to work. It completely changed the way that women were seen in the country and helped put Iceland at the forefront of the fight for equality, which could go to show that women's value in society is often under-acknowledged in the important roles that they play. Girl's mother has a TikTok in which her other children help her make her content. And on her TikTok, she posted a somewhat critical cryptic comment that seemed to imply that she does not agree with the direction that Pearl has taken with her beliefs and content. I would honestly put your daughter in line for your sake because it sucks to see her incriminate and undermine you. Jennifer replies, she needs to learn her own way. I support her hard work. She will learn reality when she starts to live it. <laughs> Meaning, when you become a mom, when you become a wife, you'll learn some of it. 
<laughs> You'll learn the harsh realities. You seem like such a good mom. I only wish she could realize it. She will. She was raised right. Everyone has to find their own way. Pearl also vehemently claims that women should not enter the workforce. And the problem is we've told women that we can just have it all. Yes, queen, have it all. You can have the career and still be treated like a traditional woman. Which is completely opposite to the life that her mother lived. Now again, usually we used to get this information from our mothers and grandmothers. But unfortunately, our mothers and grandmothers have all led us astray. But according to the University College London, researchers surveyed 19,000 British households to see how working mothers affected their children's development. And in this study, we did not see any evidence for a longer term detrimental influence on childbearing behavior of mothers working during their child's first year of life. A lot of parents and mothers who have to work feel a lot of guilt and shame around that because of external pressures and influences telling them it's so much better if they stay home. And I know a lot of stay-at-home parents feel a lot of shame and insecurity over not having a career through others making them feel like they're less important or less valuable in society when the work that they do at home is valuable labor. And just as important and essential. I think ultimately every family is different and ultimately it is my personal opinion that there is no one fit solution for every family. There just can't possibly be. And when you see these influencers telling you that every family needs to live by this set of rules, it tells me either A, they've lived an extremely privileged life or B, they don't know what they're talking about because they've never had to build a family from the ground up. Ultimately, you have to do what makes the most sense for your family, but also, and most importantly, what makes you the most mentally and emotionally happy. Because ultimately, your mental health matters and is an essential component of the health of your family. An expert wrote in the Harvard Business Review that when mothers took care of themselves, setting aside time for self-care and relaxation, their children were better adjusted. It's interesting that Pearl's own mother, Jennifer, preaches this and claims to have lived by this, and yet Pearl has come to such an opposite conclusion. There's a possibility that Pearl's mother working full-time, in addition to her raising 10 children, might have been too much for Pearl who felt emotionally neglected. And unable to work out her own internalized misogyny, Pearl blamed her mother. Maybe Pearl's own content that she makes now and her discontent towards women goes deeper than just wanting traditional gender roles in society. Maybe the manosphere unlocked years of childhood emotional trauma and neglect, and now Pearl spends her time advocating for the traditional woman, the non-working woman, the woman that's going to stay home and raise their children because that's what Pearl feels she never had. Though, of course, that's all just pure speculation. Because of Pearl's parents' parents' success, Pearl Davis herself experienced a very lavish childhood, living in luxury, having a nice home, because both of her parents had high-paying jobs. During Pearl's time at Marion Central Catholic High School, Pearl stood at 6'1 and played on the school's volleyball team. Something very sad that was discussed from Pearl's past was when Pearl talked about on a podcast how she was groomed by a coach of hers. I remember saying like, you can tell me stuff you don't like, you don't tell your parents. He, he told me before I went to college, like that I was gonna get a bunch of attention from boys because of my butt. So then he goes, you know, like Hannah, cause my first name's Hannah, yeah. the gym, the gym's empty right now. We, we could do anything you want. I'm like, what, what do you mean, Marcus? He texted me. So he said, um, he said, come back to the gym tonight. And I said, for what? And then he said like, um, nothing, just, but luckily, Pearl was able to get this coach fired eventually, though she claims her mother actually told her not to do anything about it initially. The issue I had was he was waiting till girls turned 18 to try to hook up with him. I didn't get him fired till years later because my mom told me not to. What's so surprising about this particular story that Pearl speaks about is not only that Pearl is surprised that the Manosphere blames her for the incident initially. The 
it's weird. They blame you. Like, they put the, you, the 17, 18 year old. Why guess, did you put yourself in that situation? Or you <clears throat> liked the attention? Da, 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 da. Because also, Pearl has told other women that if they don't come forward with charges, their stories shouldn't be believed. And it's always the same thing. It's like 10 years later, these chicks that had consensual relationships convinced themselves that they were assaulted. If you don't report it within six months, I, I, where is the confusion? How, how do you not know if you were assaulted? When she herself has experienced something and held on to that experience for a long enough time before coming forward with that story. She enrolled at Ohio Northern University, where she majored in entrepreneurial studies, seemingly following in her parents' footsteps. Pearl also competed on the school's Division III volleyball team. Pearl then transferred to Elmhurst University, where she also competed on their Division III volleyball team. Team. And throughout her high school and college years, she juggled volleyball and basketball. After graduating college in 2017, Pearl interned for Senator Tom Cullerton's district office. She also interned for a plumbing company where she was promoted to director of business development. During 2019, while working for a company that manages business and industrial imaging products, Pearl was planning on joining a program that would allow her to move to Europe and play basketball while completing a master's degree. But the plan fell through. Because of that, she started to explore the idea of becoming a TikTok influencer. Pearl created a TikTok account in May of 2020, passing around 100,000 followers in five months on the platform. Most of her popular content was something she would do on TikTok called the breakup quiz, where she would write out questions that people could send to their ex-partners, fill out, in which Pearl would post publicly. I just made this account specifically for quizzes, so if you don't follow me already, hit that follow button. Why do you think we broke up? Because I didn't have a phone. Did you have feelings for someone else when we broke up? No. Were you trying to talk to someone else when we broke up? No. Pearl claimed in an interview that she would refrain from posting some of these breakup quizzes if they were too controversial, which definitely is a drastic contrast from the Just Pearly Things content that she posts today, which almost tries to be as controversial as possible. This article also notes that Pearl never sends this breakup quiz to anyone in her own past because Pearl never had a boy friend serious enough for her to send it to. The only long-term relationship I can think of is a guy I talked to for a couple years in college. I do not think he would take it. It's interesting that Pearl herself has never been in a serious committed relationship since she's now almost 30, even though she advocates for women to get married as young as possible and that women lose their value as they get older. What do men value? Third thing men value, youth. How are they getting youth when the average age of first marriage for women in the U.S. is 28.6 years old? It seems that the only relationship that Pearl has ever had is the time that she briefly dated TikToker Wanye Johnson, known online as Angry Reactions, though their relationship was very brief. I'm on a date with my favorite ex who told all her friends and family members she'll never see me again. Smile for the camera. Wait, what did you say? Smile for the camera. Just smile. Okay. They gon' know. Wait, what? And Pearl's ex-best friend Emily claims that despite her brief relationship, Pearl has never really been in a serious relationship. She's never been even in a relationship. Although Pearl likes the concept of marriage and wants to have a family one day, that does not make her a reliable source for information whatsoever, nor does that make her an expert. Maybe she would be more of a trustworthy source on marriage if she, I don't know, had one. Um, did you know that she's never been in an actual relationship? relationship or has lived with a man and she gives marriage advice. But the one thing I've learned from being a married person is that even other married people have no idea what they're talking about. And marriage is a very complicated thing. And every individual person is very different. And what works for one partnership doesn't work for the other. And so truly, the only people I trust are people who have studied this extensively and are literal experts in the area, not just because they read things online and are fascinated in the topic. But according to Pearl, therapists themselves are bad and you shouldn't take their advice because most of them 
our older single women. Pearl questioned how she could take advice from them if they can't maintain a relationship themselves. I've noticed a lot of therapists are like older single women and I'm kind of like if you can't maintain a relationship why would I take advice from you? <laughs> I'm just this is just something I've noticed. Um, and the reason I decided to go to therapy is because um, in the next like five to seven years ideally you know um, something to say. So I would make her 33 when she's getting married. That's pretty old. So you mean you? So you're talk you're talking about you then, right? Okay for me, but not for thee. In order to consume Pearl's content on any level, you have to suspend disbelief for a period of time and ignore who she is as a person completely to listen to anything she says. Because what she says is so contradictory to her actions themselves. But those who would stumble on Pearl's TikTok videos in the algorithm wouldn't know her background. So some of what she was saying, they would buy. And Pearl realized that the further and further she engaged with Manosphere content, sort of outraged people, the more engagement her content would receive. Pearl's TikTok account would get banned many, many times over the course of her posting controversial content, but this didn't deter her from going down the rabbit hole into further and further extreme statements. The point of this is, we have lived in such delusion that we have a 35-year-old corporate lawyer who probably will not reproduce, feeling like she deserves Leonardo DiCaprio because we have been told since childhood that we are equal to men and we are not. According to Pearl's ex-best friend Emily and ex-boyfriend Wanye, Pearl's behavior and perspective on modern society seemingly changed overnight once she decided to become a Manosphere content creator. She doesn't believe anything she talks about. And I've come to the conclusion that all she has to do is study this red pill theory and then perform for her audience. But no, she was not always like this. She was completely normal. The stuff that she says now is shocking to me because it wasn't just like a progressive getting worse. It was like all of a sudden she's like, I'm gonna do red pill content to the extreme. Many people also believe that Pearl's drastic turn into the Manosphere content was due to her breakup as after Pearl's breakup with internet personality Angry Reactions, she immediately went live and told her audience that he broke up with her because her body count was too high. One yay, angry reacts. You guys, how does no one on this app remember this? Pearl entered her villain era when her and one yay broke up for good. And she went on her live and told everyone that he dumped her because her body count was too high. Though a lot of people have claimed that Pearl did this live stream stating that one Ye was uncomfortable with her body count and that's why there was an eventual breakup that led to Pearl's villain era. I have not seen any proof of this live stream's existence from what I've scoured on the internet. Also around the time of the breakup, Pearl tweeted that she discovered that one Ye had children, and that she decided to break up with him for that reason. They were then in an on-again, off-again relationship for several months before angry reactions dumped just pearly things for good, which many people feel started Pearl's villain era. Y'all treated me a certain type of way because of what my my ex-girlfriend is out here saying. I made that video saying that I am not a part of anything she got going on and y'all treated me like I ain't going around saying this stuff. While mentioning one yay or angry reactions, I do think it's important to talk about how recently one yay's most recent ex has come forward with allegations of DV. I did not want to have to do this, but since one yay wants to go on live, and spread a bunch of lies. I have proof of him putting his hands on me multiple times. Now, first off, I wanna wish the best for her. I also just think it's very interesting that Pearl often blames women for their poor partner choices if their partner treats them wrong in a relationship. But the man that she chose, she ended up discovering had two children, which she didn't like, and now has some pretty bad accusations against him. Who is Pearl picking, considering that 
Anytime a guy does something wrong, no matter what it is, she tells women to simply just pick better. Okay, so then you pick guys that cheat. I discovered that last year Pearl tweeted about a breakup she had, so I decided to go ahead and check the archives. And it turns out that Pearl actually got catfished by an obese man with two children on TikTok. It's difficult to discuss Pearl's content without seeing how deeply intertwined it is with her own self-image. Pearl's entire internet persona can be described as what many people have defined as a pick-me. Expression used to describe a person typically a woman who seeks validation and attention from others, typically men, by emphasizing how different or better they are from other members of their gender. Pygmies are often perceived as seeking favor or attention from men by trying to distance themselves from perceived negative stereotypes of women. And researchers have found that those with low self-esteem are likely to engage in self-deprecating behavior and seek approval from from others. Where's your value as a woman, would you say, like on a scale of 1 to 10? Uh, I give myself like a 5. A 5? Yeah, that's fair, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, based on your metric, I'm not saying one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So we're looking yeah, for... Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think I'm a five, so. Which could attribute to this pick-me attitude. There are several potential negatives associated with embodying characteristics of a pick-me individual. Pick-me behavior can contribute to undermining solidarity among women by attempting to pit them against each other in competition for male approval. And I am going to be giving a special whiteboard presentation called Ladies, you are not as special as you think. Men make society run and women don't. Our jobs, we could, all the women could stop working tomorrow. And one must think in order to get to that place mentally that you feel like you have to denounce all other women in order to feel above them or like you have an opportunity to be picked, you must feel pretty lowly yourself already. Like your options are few and far between. In a video titled, why I'm able to listen to Manosphere content, Pearl gave a rather depressing outlook on her life. Pearl talked about how growing up, she felt undesired, which caused her to develop low self-esteem. Or even girls, they'll ask me like, how can you listen to this man? And I have one, one answer for you. Low self Esteem. Growing up, Pearl never thought highly of herself, claiming that she was humbled from a young age. From a young age, I haven't thought highly of myself. I never thought that I deserved a lot, to be honest. Um, I never thought of myself as a queen. Um, and I never thought of myself <laughs> super highly. I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna just be honest here. She also talked about how most of her friends were more attractive than her by societal standards, so most guys, even the average ones, would ask about her friends first, and then if they got rejected by her friends, they'd come to her as a sort of last resort. I was what you call humbled, okay? Most of my friends, right, were generally like more attractive than me. I was never the hot friend. Most guys, even the, the average guys, they would ask me about my friend first. And if that didn't work out, then then they would come crawling to me. So because she grew up with such low self-esteem, when someone like Kevin Samuels would tell women that their standards were too high, that rhetoric would make more sense to Pearl because she already viewed herself in a dim light. Some of the Manosphere's hateful rhetoric would only serve to confirm all the loathing that Pearl reserved for herself deep down. And instead of having to harbor that within herself, she now had an outlet. She could project all that loathing and self self-hatred outward onto other women and maybe bring them down with her. Pearl claims that her only intention is to preach traditionalism, but if Pearl's genuine want was to help build up her own idea of traditionalism, she would simply live by example. But she does the exact opposite of that. Pearl doesn't live by any of the ideas that she preaches online. If Pearl was genuinely wanting modern women to lean more towards traditionalism, she would be happy when someone who is a modern woman 
takes the pivot or the plunge towards traditionalism or becoming a trad wife, right? I think she would embrace that, be ecstatic about it. And yet instead, this angers Pearl, especially when that other woman receives a lot of attention for it. Former OnlyFans creator Nala Ray decided to convert to Christianity and post online about her sort of journey to traditionalism. Instead of being happy about this supposed win for the trad wives or embracing her as you would expect Pearl to do, Pearl was outraged by it and all the attention that Nala was receiving. This former sex worker and Michael Knowles go back and forth about me saying I need prayers. You guys keep saying I'm obsessed. I just want the truth to come out because again, this happens all over the country where stars come out, say they're sorry, and you guys hand them a microphone and make them a spokesperson of the word and nobody has a problem with it. Jesus hated false prophets. He hated them. He went, <laughs> he, he tore up the temple, guys. Pearl, no one is saying that this girl is a prophet. The critical since Pearl claims that she wants to just inform women of all the dangers of feminism and why they should live a traditional life. But when someone does pivot that way, she doesn't accept them. This is the person that Pearl ultimately became through both her upbringing and her life online. And while it's important to examine how a harmful person became who they are so that we can try to better understand their motives, the most important important part is understanding the true damage that they did. Because like any villain origin story, once Pearl transformed into a self-hating person with even the tiniest bit of social media power, she used that power to bring down others, do as much damage in spreading hateful rhetoric as she possibly could. So let's discuss the harm of Pearl. An essential component to the story of Pearl is the role that the Black Manosphere played in Pearl's initial career. The community she in is she's in is actually the Black Manosphere. Platforming her and ultimately how she utilized their support while also going on to exploit those within the Black Manosphere and then goes on to spread racism statements online and platform well racists. So what exactly is the Black Manosphere? There's a great video by YouTuber FD Signifier that extensively dives into the subject. The Manosphere, black or otherwise, is at its core a byproduct of men aligned to a specific performance of masculinity under patriarchy. A performance that they aren't good at. It would feel like a great disservice to boil down something that stems from complex racial and systemic issues embedded in our society that have resulted in the Black Manosphere into such a simple explanation, so I highly recommend FD Signifier's video on the matter. Essentially, the Black Manosphere is a subsect of the Manosphere and a community of, well, primarily Black men who share in a lot of the same ideology on masculinity, while a lot of Manosphere content in general is based on the idea of the gender war. Especially in the modern day where black women are gaining access to higher levels of education and economic status that black men are more intensely barred from. A lot of these guys' content, what you mostly see is what I'll call black women's cringe content that explicitly seeks to characterize black women as degenerate or evil or stupid or hating of black men. And while a lot of black manosphere content creators claim to be creating content centered around betterment of men, as FD Signifier points out, most of their content ends up just being centered around demonizing or embarrassing women, primarily in the black man Manosphere, content creators focus on demonizing black women. Or the black manosphere is a battering ram for this frustration, for this conflict to butt against black women and blame them and attack them because they're an easier target than white supremacy. See, especially for a lot of these men who have had certain views or certain experiences inform how they see the world. In case you ain't heard it, but um, the price of has skyrocketed. Okay. I can already tell by the length of the eyelashes um, in conjunction with the 
dexterity of the forehead bangs that this will not be an intellectually riveting interesting. conversation interesting that pearl a white woman comes so interested in inserting herself into a niche sect of the manosphere that primarily criticizes and targets black women and well was created off of larger systemic and racial issues that she has never day in her life worked to try to understand or comprehend now much of this conversation is very complex and I don't want to oversimplify it, but I wanted to bring up the basics of the Black Manosphere world just so that it could be understood how odd it is that this is the part of the Manosphere that Pearl decided to become heavily involved in. Out of all the different categories in the Manosphere, she didn't get involved with the pickup artists, primarily creepy white dudes. Hey, um, I just <laughs> saw you and I want to let you know that I would swim up the Amazon with a 45 pound dumbbell tied to my scrotum. She didn't get involved with the debaters, though we know that's why she can't debate for shit. You know, your, your big push is that you care about men and you don't think that men are getting enough of a say. But I thanks care about women Hang on, too. I haven't I made the point too. yet. Pearl got involved with the black manosphere, which primarily targets black women. By doing so, didn't just put herself against women, but deliberately put herself against black black woman and tokenized herself as an example of a good woman on these podcasts. In this video from Signified B-Sides, what do you notice about the thumbnails from Just Pearly Things content? Women cause divorce and, and women need to be submissive and and nobody cares about men. Hmm, interesting. Now, a lot of creators noticed this and started pointing out that Just Pearly Things was clearly pandering to the Black Manosphere. I think I, I deal with more city girls than anyone on this panel with the amount of people I talk to in this in a week. Why do you, feel like you to... surround yourself with those type of people? Why do you We're... bring on those type of people? They make what good is your, TV. What is your, um, they make so you're doing TV. it for entertainment? Yeah. So that's your, it's that's your whole enter life. It's an entertaining show, yeah. If she was just creating content for entertainment and she doesn't actually care about any of the racial issues happening, instead inserted herself into the middle of it simply to exploit and profit from it. Just Paul is no different to the Kevin Samuels of this world, Cynthia G's, um, the, the Melanie Kings, there's a few others, I can't remember the other names, a few other women I've seen. Um, who pander to their audience um, at the detriment of the other gender. And they do it for entertainment and fun and money, destroying community through entertainment. What's so sinister about the way that Pearl utilized her platform is that of course she regurgitated common Manosphere talking points, but on top of that, Pearl took common Black Manosphere talking points and started reiterating them on her platform. They allowed anybody who agreed with their rhetoric and their talking point to now t lay hold and claim of their uh, uh, space. The black men in a black manosphere had a problem with their modern women or black women, whatever you want to call it, right? And they I call it almost uh, same talking points, the same ones they talk discuss every single time. Baby mothers, single mothers, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, women that are, 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 are you know, uh, three or fours, and women that are side chicks, and women that are modern women. They have the same old rhetoric. It's not. It's not hard. To, it's not hard to play, you guys. It's not. It's not hard to play, you guys, because there's a lack of nuance and there's a lack of critical thinking going on within these communities. This space has the same rhetoric that cults do, and it's not hard to recognize the speech patterns once you start spending time with them. So no wonder when someone comes in, enters the Black Manosphere space with the same talking points, but is a white woman, no wonder she's heralded. No wonder. The Black Manosphere, in turn, welcomed her in as a part of their community, at least initially. Article written by Astra Xavier 
titled Just Pearly Things of Self-Inflicted Wounds and Lessons to be Learned talks about the fallout with just pearly things in the Black Manosphere. According to Astra, the Black Manosphere rallied to Pearl, as Pearl had professed her love to them as well, and seemed to be saying all the right, surface-level things for those in the Black Manosphere. Pearl also allegedly claimed her love of Black men within the dating space. I I've dated mostly Black guys. Ah, see? Your boy is on 10 with it, see? <laughs> is there a reason for that? Have you delved into that that reasoning? The reasoning? Um, I don't know. I think part of it is like, I feel like black guys are usually more extroverted. Mm. And like, I like extroverted. I like talkers. I'm a chit chatter. I get along with chit chatters. Right. Um, one. And then two, I don't know. I just like, like, I think black guys have very nice smiles because it like looks mm -hmm. like whiter, to be honest. Oh, the contrast, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's real. Have you ever discussed with your parents that, that certain attraction that you have? Oh, yeah, they know. They don't care. Eventually, the bad sides of Pearl and the general hypocrisy of everyone involved would come out. UK YouTuber Sara Garvey claimed that he helped Pearl when she was just starting out on her career in the Manosphere influencer realm. So when she came to London, she said that she wanted to make, to make a podcast. And I said, no problem. Okay, let's talk about it. And I decided to feature on her show. Now, when I featured on her show, because of my following in the UK, people would tune in. So essentially, I helped Pearl grow her channel. Okay, I was on there week to week. But when Sara Garvey was collaborating with Pearl and getting to know her, he noticed something else. He noticed that Pearl was possessed with what he calls a colonial mindset, something he claimed to be aware of early on. So I began working with Pearl and from the beginning, I started to think that maybe this girl has a colonial mindset. Now, we all know that we don't want to be paranoid. So I kept working with her. However, the more I worked with her is the more that I saw. She had a colonial type viewpoint when it came to black people. Zara Garvey showed examples of him trying to educate her on colonialism. And you can see in the clips her just kind of playing dumb claiming that she has no idea what he's talking about. I had to school her a few times on what it was like to be black and the black experience and also what slavery and colonization was actually like. Do you think that historical catastrophes must be compensated for? No. No. That's stupid. So what do you mean by the colonization? So the colonization of Africa, so both the people and the resources. Mm -hmm. Wait, so are you saying like in Africa, when you say colonize, you're saying like, like did England come in and colonize? Yeah, like so Europe, France, okay. Spain, Portugal, okay. England. But the irony came when Sara Garvey found out that Pearl was actually trying to colonize the Black Manosphere space, offering contracts to YouTubers where they would sign away their labor to her or what he describes as a mere pit if we look at the contracts that they signed, you would understand the reason why I use the term colonization and colonial. She said she would want me within her studio four days per week. I said, so working four to five days a week for seven hours is essentially a day job. She said she does percentages. So I said, okay, cool. Well, what's the percentage? She said, Sarah, you're the high end. So you will get 70, 30. So I said, fine, okay, let me listen. 70% goes to me and 30% goes to you. Now she looked at me and she said, no, 70% goes to me, Pearl, and 30% goes to me, Sara Garvey. And that's when I started scratching my head. So even though she acted dumb when Sara Garvey would bring up the topic of colonialism, she would go on to employ these exact same tactics within her own business as a business strategy. Now, when I first studied Pearl, I was very tempted to see her as stupid. It's very easy to look at a lot of the content she posts and just write her off as a very stupid person. To simply write Pearl off as dumb 
is to brush aside the harm of Pearl, as one would do with a child, or what those with internalized misogyny often do to girls, as if they somehow just get themselves in over their head. It's okay, dumb little one, you didn't know any better. Go swoon on a fainting couch, read your romance books, or whatever it is girls do, and leave the podcast mics to the real men. Either way, to treat Pearl as if she's not an adult who has a power and a responsibility to equip herself with knowledge over what she's saying would be equally irresponsible on my part. We're supposed to believe that this highly educated rich white girl from the Midwest doesn't know what colonization is. No, when there's something that she's against, when there's something she doesn't really want to ride for, like reparations, she wants to act fucking stupid. She wasn't born under a rock. She wasn't born yesterday. She knows what colonization is. She knows what it was like. She's playing fucking stupid because it benefits her. Because she can always fall back on this, well, I wasn't really educated in the subject matter. Dara Garvey exposes that the black content creators working for just pearly things, King Riches and Auntie Jenny, were on contracts that give Pearl 85 to 90 percent of the revenue. These YouTubers would only receive 10 to 15 percent of the profit just for the privilege of shooting in her studio while they did all the heavy lifting, all of the work. She said it's 10 to 15 percent. So essentially, she could be owning 80 percent of the content, which is basically the monetized views on somebody's channel, and they only take home 15% of the money. She said yes. I said, Pearl, how long are these contracts for? She said three years. This sounds like such extreme exploitation. You'd think that Pearl would outright deny it or make it try to sound better. But instead, in the comment section, Pearl just seemingly confirms Sarah Garvey's claims. She says, Sam music! People get lost in having 100% of nothing or 30% of something. Can I get a da 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 sound effect? Yeah, that is her saying that, um, you know, it's 30% of something, right? Now, hold on, there's more. Sad music! I'm looking for someone to do my morning show online at 30% cut if anyone's interested. Like, stop the show, like. Initially, both employees, King Riches and Auntie Jenny, tried to defend Pearl and probably more so their jobs. Did the cameras belong to me? Does this, pay, does this belong to me? No, Pearl pays for this. Right? She don't pay for this, but she pays for all of this. So Pearl even called her employees at one point her Africans. Pearl got exposed because she made the clip talking about those are her Africans. I'm trying to get my Africans in America, my Africans. King Riches tried to defend the situation by saying that even if Pearl was rich, he wouldn't care. And this is an honest moment, yeah? This is an honest p moment. Right. And Pearl even heard me say this. Even if Pearl was a hardcore racist, yeah? Knowing my situation, how I'm growing and how everything's going in the right direction, would it make sense for me to yeah. just up and leave? I think these situations more so highlight employees being afraid to leave a potentially racist employer due to being locked in a contract, but that's just my opinion on the matter. Soon after the controversy, Insider and Yahoo News reported that Pearl was planning to try and sue Sara Garvey. In a message to Insider, Pearl described Sara Garvey's claims as defamatory and false, suggested that she intended to pursue legal action, and said that Garvey had an agenda against her for months, but Pearl refused to share information about the contracts between her and her employees as that's private information of my employees because she just cares so much about protecting her employees and their rights, obviously. But eventually, both Auntie Jenny and King Richie's left the Just Pearly Things network. Auntie Jenny spoke about how she felt during her time working with the Just Pearly Things team. As far as I'm concerned, I don't even care about respect for black people. She's got no respect for me because, mm. like, you know, that's I've spoken to her, I've, spoke, I've talked to her, she's ignored me. I just think that 
They're letting her go down this view. And why are they going down this view? Why are they allowing her to go down this road? And it seems from this statement that when Auntie Jenny tried to speak up about how she felt uncomfortable with the way that the Just Pearly Things content was leaning more and more controversial, she was ignored. Then King Riches also left the network. What's going on, people? King Riches. Hey, listen, I've got some news that I'm sure a lot of you will find interesting. I have left the Just Purdy Things Network, the JPT Network, Just Purdy Things direction is not the same direction that I want to go in. He left in a pretty respectful manner, but it seemed to many people that a lot of the things that Pearl was saying at the time, which we'll get to, caused both employees to feel that there was a misalignment in their beliefs and identity and that they should go their separate ways. So that was how Pearl tried to utilize the Black Manosphere space to bolster herself up within the Manosphere community. But Pearl also also used other content tactics like rage baiting, content designed to make people react, comment, engage, whether positive or negative, help the algorithm boost Pearl's platform. And some of the statements that Pearl would say became more and more extreme. So let's dive into some of the supposed beliefs of Hannah Pearl Davis. As stated briefly before, Pearl believes that the education system has been ruined simply because women took over the education system. Women go into industries and ruin them. So like in the 1850s, men were the majority of the teachers and um, IQ has steadily been dropped and especially the education system. And yet simultaneously, Pearl believes that women have an unfair advantage in the education system because it's all women. In my opinion, the schools favor the women. And how do I think they do this? One, it is a completely female staff. Now let's look at the last hundred years. Are women typically sympathetic to men? I just realized what makes this even more sad is that Pearl's mother also was an ex-teacher. So she's also bashing her mother again in this, in a passive aggressive way. But no matter what, keep Pearl away from the education system and children in general because she tweeted this once. 16 year old chicks are hot hotter than 26 year old chicks. At least she changed the age from 16 to 18 in this clip. The hottest chicks are between the ages of 18 to let's say 25. In her content, Pearl also often calls women whales or fat. <laughs> you also described whales as, as something else. What was that? Oh, fat chicks. Yeah, yeah so why? <laughs> and so I it. said, you're a whale. You're a Will. So I was actually watching your podcast earlier and you sp you spoke to someone who was, I, I would say, probably a size 12 and you called her it, fat, a beast and a divorcee. She was fat, obese and a divorcee. I mean, like, I don't know what to say. This is the thing, women, we don't want to live in reality. Why do I need to look at your roles? And then I have to go on social media, then boom, whale. Boom, another whale. I don't really know what to say to that other than, is that really the best you can come up with? That's the type of name calling that one would hear in middle school. It's so uninspiring at this point. It's almost embarrassing. It's like when people used to call me alien in middle school because I was lanky and had a big forehead. Where are my big forehead girlies at? Pearl has claimed that birth control is the root of all evil. If this was Pearl's world, I'd get rid of birth control. I'd ban it, but I, that'll never happen. Hello? I think that's the root of all evil. And I'd actually go for the root of all evil. The root of all evil. And her reasoning is because it, well, does its job. And so women are not burdened with responsibility. Why? Because it's freedom without responsibility. And before this. women, like the, the con like I believe in consequences for your decision. You know, that small responsibility of raising a human into the world and hopefully bettering the future of humanity through the methodology in which you're able to raise such human, hopefully with empathy, kindness, safety, and compassion that they're able to carry on with them into their adulthood and employ to others. Just that that small responsibility that women are avoiding. How dare they put that off for some later time when they're ready to take on that responsibility. She claimed in the same breath that women also should not be able to vote, trying to link it back to the military because men get drafted, but women don't. I think if we want to vote, equally draft us. Y'all want equality. And personally, I don't want to get drafted, so I'll be in the kitchen. I don't know what decade she's living in, but the last draft was in the 1970s. Additionally, instead of saying, hey, 
Selective service seems unfair and unnecessary because we already have a lot of people volunteering for the military. Earl tries to overcomplicate the situation by pointing the blame at women and feminists, which seems like purposefully roundabout reasoning, as opposed to others who just believe that selective service is unnecessary because there are enough people in the military already. Though I know reenlistments are declining. I know. So feminists actually, they want the draft abolished. So their point is, let's not sign up for the service. Let's abolish the draft altogether. That is also equality, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I've never heard him talk about that, but... On top of that, as a former military wife, I'm kind of convinced that Pearl just knows nothing about the military. Not only are women very involved in the military, with 17.3% of the active duty force being comprised of women, also Pearl's point was that women wouldn't be affected by a war because they're not obligated to participate in the draft. But military wives and military families families are very affected by war and political conflict. You don't have to be an active duty member to be someone involved in the military who's affected by a political conflict. Why women shouldn't vote? I wanted to know why men were so angry about women. Why are there all these complaints about women? And when I started researching the stuff, it was pretty easy to figure out why. 90% of women have been on birth control. One out of three women has had an abortion. One out of three women has an STD. Uh, average body count is over five, so that your average wife has slept with over five people. 95% of women are not virgins on their wedding days. So I understand the complaint. How dare they take away the voting? A logical conclusion from Pearl, who's definitely not an AI random word generator, cued in on manosphere terms, regurgitating common talking points without ever coming to a conclusion or making any sort of argument whatsoever. Um, why do you think women shouldn't vote? Oh, because I just think we're too emotional. Like, true. I mean, gotta love this guy Troy's enthusiastic true to Pearl's almost boring stereotypical claim that women are too emotional, therefore they shouldn't vote. Pearl went on in this clip to claim that women being able to vote is what caused the breakdown of the family unit. Also, women being allowed to vote allowed women to spend too much money, which in turn raised the taxes. So women are responsible for all destruction of families, as well as any raises of taxes. You silly, spendy, emotional woman right now. How does it feel to have so much destructive power at your fingertips? Crush entire societies with the power of your vote. Go out and vote. <laughs> then like, look what's happened. A lot of money's being spent. Taxes are raised. Family units gone. We're Family gone. units gone. Post marriage society. Earl's solution to this problem is that any woman in debt should not be allowed to vote. But men in debt? Eh, it's okay. It's fine. That's okay. We're all in debt. So nobody in debt can vote. In yeah. Including men? Um, I mean, the women have to go especially, but maybe some men. I mean, but to act like it's the same, like this is my problem. The trad cons will come in or the liberals and they'll say what about men yeah a lot of men shouldn't vote too but the women is the worst part so just to keep up with all of this pearl believes that if a woman enters an industry that industry will get ruined but since women aren't in equally tough industries as men are like the military they shouldn't be able to vote but also because women gained the ability to vote families are torn apart the economy's destroyed pearl claims that women are more attractive when they're younger, but when they get into a relationship, which they shouldn't wait until they're too old for, they should not use birth control because it's evil. Even though when you're younger, you're probably less prepared to have a child. And yet, on top of that, Pearl has condoned and cheating on their partners and stated she'd be okay with her future husband cheating on her. I think if you get a high value man, if you if you choose to marry, if I chose to go down the path of high value man, then that would also be signing up for high value problems. So if I chose to go down that path, I would know that it's a possibility and I don't think I would want to 
ruin an entire family over that. So would I, would I give him permission? No, but if it happened, am I gonna break up my whole home? She makes some really bizarre claims about cheating. If a woman cheats, she's trying to leave you. If a man cheats, yes, yes, he's yes. just like, it's, it's, like it's like a handshake. <laughs> you can absolutely sleep with a woman who you may find very attractive and very sexy and everything else, but your heart is still completely with another woman. Yeah. Like, when she like this. No, when you're in a relationship, you stay committed. That is the whole point of being in a relationship. Not wait for this woman to get married. I actually hope for the day that she does so she can eat her words. Pearl believes that nowadays women want too much control in relationships. There is nothing worse than a controlling woman. Why? Because as women, it's like, we don't even know what we want. One day we want this. One day we want that. One day we feel this. One day we feel that. It's like, we are not meant to be in control. But this idea that we have an equal say in relationships, I actually think it is mean to tell women that. And I think it is mean to push women who want, let's just be honest, we're basically like big kids, right? That can just be propagated and like you can push us to do things. Like, um, I, I think it's mean to tell us to be in a role that we are not meant to be in. Yes, women are just virtually big kids. That's why they also should be the ones to raise the next generation of children and take care of the home because that's something big children would do. Like when you say you want to be trad wife, do you mean all the way back to lobotomy trad wife? You think women should do nothing at all, not even domestic labor. Maybe maybe we're miscommunicating something here. The idea of a traditional woman in modern times is just someone who lies on a couch and plays Candy Crush all day. So those are some of the bizarre talking points that Pearl has circulated. Believe it or not, Pearl's online behavior continued to escalate even more until it reached a tipping point. And one of the most egregious things that Pearl has done is promote, I don't even want to call him an influencer, um, I would just say nefarious, hateful person, Nick Fuentes. Once Pearl started becoming more well-known within the Manosphere, she started aligning herself with different Manosphere influencers. Once infamous Manosphere content creator Andrew Tater Tot was completely deplatformed and additionally thrown in the slammer, many people were calling Pearl the next Andrew Tater Tot. The New York Post called her the female Andrew Tate. So she tapped into genuine female pushback to the excesses of wokery, or is she just an attention seeker? We'll find out in a moment. In fact, in the three months since Andrew Tater Tot was detained, Pearl's audience grew by 50%. Her YouTube subscribers jumped from 800,000 to 1.3 million. Pearl strategically started making appearances on other popular platforms in the Manosphere, like the podcast Fresh and Fit, among other creators. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about this because I know things, unlike this one over here, no offense. I don't really care if you went through it. Continue, you don't know continue, anything about continue. the legal codes. <laughs> it's easy to file restraining orders, I know. You don't really need any evidence. So again, this means nothing No, no, to me. even so, okay, okay, I'll there, continue. And they I'll continue. looked at my whole body, I'm this sorry, woman, Myra, yeah, I just, yeah, the, There was I'm a whole sorry. witness I'm there sorry. as well. Okay, what okay. is I, I thought so because she looked kind of slutty. Mm. So that's why I thought she was, but she looks like a wholesome girl. So like but the most controversial collaboration came when Pearl invited Nick Fuentes on her podcast. Fuentes is an American far-right political commentator who's known for extreme white supremacist, misogynistic, homophobic, and Semitic and Islamophobic views and statements. While I could talk in length about all the disgusting things that Nick Fuentes has said, that would probably cause the demonetization of this video. That being said, there's an extensive history of reprehensible things that Nick Fuentes has said and many, many reasons why he should not be platformed. Now, Pearl advertised this podcast with Nick Fuentes as a debate, but despite being advertised as such, one once Nick Fuentes was on Pearl's podcast, she never challenged him on any of his views. And instead, the podcast turned into basically a platform for Nick to further promote his political viewpoints. Not only did Pearl platform Nick Fuentes, but she started agreeing with some of his takes. Which, you know, I agree with him. I'm like, I admire Stalin. I admire him. 
I think I got red pilled a little bit more this interview. Well, good. <laughs> well, I'd be the guy to do it. You know, I'm the I'm the human red pill. Most notably, Pearl perpetuated the idea that slavery was embellished, which is something that she brought up multiple times on the podcast that Nick Fuentes never prompted her to bring up. You know what this reminds me of? What? The way they put American slavery as above all different types of slavery <laughs> almost. The guy who made Root said, I wanted a myth for my people to live by. So they often, but that's what they do is they embellish and I'm not trying to say it wasn't horrible. It was. Right. But they want to make it like more horrible. Then at some point in the podcast, Pearl gave Nick the opportunity to explain why he believed the cost was embellished. All the while she's laughing along in the background. Okay, but what they say is like six million. I don't think six million. Europe decimated. <laughs> Seven million Germans, 20 million Russians, five million Poles. Yeah. Just just checking the till here, Mark, and it seems you're short a few million. Predictably, this podcast did not go over well, even just for the fact that there was no intelligent conversation to be had. Pearl did not challenge any beliefs. She didn't bring any discussion to the table. She simply sat there and laughed and did nothing to challenge very damaging and harmful beliefs. Pearl received backlash across social media and took down the video. She uploaded a somewhat apology video saying she was going to take accountability for her actions, but then would go on to avoid discussing the topic with anyone who would try and broach the subject. For example, during Pearl's interview with the Trigonometry podcast, she would refuse to address the controversy, saying that there were legal things going on and that she would upload a video pertaining to the situation that would explain everything. But you had him on and then you took that interview down and apologized. Mm -hmm. So what happened with that whole thing? Oh, there's, there's, a, I can't talk too much. There's like legal things going on. There's um, legal things going on. Yeah, wow. there's, um, not, not with Nick, but just, yeah, but there's, um, I, I have a video coming out about that whole thing. So you, you guys have to wait for the video. Well, um, but I will say I, um, I did not find Nick to be racist. Uh, my staff actually did not find him to be the Black Manosphere, a community that had initially uplifted Pearl and platformed her, was, well, pretty pissed at Pearl in the fallout of the Nick Fuentes podcast. I'm Italian. The only times I'm on time for things is when I, like, get the time wrong, when I think I'm <laughs> supposed to be there way earlier than I'm actually You're supposed to be today. there. Because I thought I was supposed to be here at three. Yeah, well, so. it's okay. Blessing was more light, uh, late African. <laughs> well, he's black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yes, the racial undertones, that's what we're talking about. Way too comfortable, Felicia. Actually, right. Way too comfortable. Especially because Pearl went on another podcast with Nick Fuentes and did, again, absolutely nothing while Nick claimed that interracial dating was wrong. Gabby has a black boyfriend, you know? So it's like, do you think that's wrong? I do. Yeah, she should break up with him? I do think that, yeah. I prefer that she wasn't doing that. Even though Pearl herself has dated black men before, she did nothing to clap back at Nick. When the hosts of Trigonometry confronted Pearl about this, she just said that Nick's stance on interracial dating has more to do with his culture. Are you kidding me? Pearl even threw her staff member under the bus, claiming that she was being combative, while in her perspective, Nick was just kidding. Her overall argument for Nick being a good guy was that he showed up on time and was really polite, despite his harm harmful political views. Which to me, again, is Pearl's attempt at escaping controversy through playing dumb. Pearl issued a apology video, but the damage had been done and there was no going back or regaining the support of the Black Manosphere. Just know it's not an excuse. It's my own fault. I take full accountability for everything that happened. So the first thing is why did you have Nick on? <clears throat> so, um, the reasoning behind having Nick Fuentes on was because I heard that he was on the no fly list and he lost his bank account. So I did know that he was known a known racist. I did know he was a known sexist. I did know 
that basically every bad name in the book from the right and the left, everyone hated him. I really just like to give people the benefit of the doubt when I interview them. I, I don't go into interviews trying to interrogate someone. I just more try to listen and see where they're coming from. Um, in hindsight, that wasn't smart. After receiving a ton of backlash for her podcast, Pearl decided to go the opposite way and sort of rescind her apology by uploading the video Unapologetic, where she retracted her original apology and went even harder against her opposers. The community she in is she's in is actually the black manosphere. So when she got canceled for what happened with having um, Nick Fuentes on because she was a an idiot. She was getting canceled in the black manosphere. And this is why, guys, never apologize to the mob because they don't want your apology. They don't care about you. My whole point is that these reaction channels are just sitting there looking for you to say the wrong thing. They're looking for you to slip up and they're not going to things in good faith. Uh, doesn't she believe women should be submissive yet she won't submit to men telling her she's racist and wrong? She should probably take her own advice and, and be submissive and take the L. True. Most foolish thing of all of this is in Pearl's interview with Trigonometry, she says, I do not find Nick Fuentes to be racist. My staff actually did not find him to be racist. Racist. Roll the clip. I don't wish luck to racist. Oh, I'm not racist. Uh, yes, you are. Yes, you are, Nick. Yeah, I am a little bit racist, yeah, but... Pearl is a white woman who would not pick up on any racial microaggressions coming from Nick towards her staff. Nick often masks his extreme views in humor and satire. So while Pearl can just brush it off as just a joke and laugh at it, the underlying message of what he's saying is still there. One of her ex-Black staff members, King Riches, came out and said that he even warned Pearl against having Nick Fuentes on as a guest. And it felt forced to defend her when I didn't defend her and I said in the video, I'm not defending her. And I said in the video, I'm checking her. And I told her she has to address the thing she said. And I said to her that it wasn't a good idea having Nick Fuentes on there. And I said that he is a Ultimately, it seems like Pearl may have been trying to lean further and further into extremism and outrage content to tap into and exploit that cultural underbelly and capitalize on that grift like so many of her media counterparts. But it ended up just exposing how disingenuous she truly is because her entire start was developed within the Black Manosphere and supporting the cause of Black Manosphere ideologies. And to go from that to bringing someone like Nick Fuentes on and platforming him and his racist beliefs just exposed how much Pearl doesn't actually stand for anything within these communities and is only trying to capitalize on the grift. So any supporters she had started to crumble away, especially as Pearl garnered more challengers who only further exposed that she has no idea what she's talking about. It is ultimately to her core dispassionate about it all. Pearl's overall, well, fraudulent and dispassionate nature was further realized with the debate that she participated in alongside Ethan Klein of the H3 podcast. Ethan Klein brought on Pearl Davis to the H3 podcast for the intent of a well-rounded conversation in which he could respectfully challenge her for some of her misogynistic views and damaging content that she puts out. Generally, like, what kind of messages... Are you sharing on your platform? What kind of important messages is it that you find yourself are about? Um, I believe in family. So I think that we should have policies that push family. Um, I think that feminism overall was a bad thing. I think um, that we should be... I think women are happier um, when we have, you know, a family and kids over a career in the long run. I might be surprised, but do you feel that sometimes you argue from emotion rather than like concrete facts? I find that when you talk about, and I've, I've watched a lot of your videos, you mm. say stuff that I don't think has much of a 
backing and reality. It's based on feelings, <laughs> maybe instead of not emotions, but feelings. You say, I feel this to be true. Do you feel you do that a lot or no? <laughs> um, I try. I would say I am a woman. So sometimes, yeah. Okay. At one point, Pearl says that divorce should be illegal unless there's one-sided a harmful statement that Pearl makes is when she claims that most domestic violence is mutual. All right. If it's one-sided, physically abusive, okay, fine. Divorce. We, we can allow divorce for those exceptions. But okay. like I've even talked to people that work at like a centers and they say that the majority of abuse is mutual. So it's not just one side's hitting the, hitting the other. It's like mutual. So surely that's I just, not every well, time. I think, yeah, I know. I but it's not healthier different. either. Mm-hmm. I just think that the goal should be to keep families together and that the goal should be to work through it. First off, it's important to note that there are many different types of abuse and some of these can be harder to identify, especially early on in a relationship, or they can take root later on in a relationship as people change, ultimately leading to a bad mental or emotional environment for the partners in the relationship. That being said, on top of that, claiming that most cases of abuse our mutual abuse is just not a thing. Mutual abuse is believed by experts to be a largely flawed ideology. Since in domestic violence, usually the dynamic is that one partner aims to exert power over the other through a pattern of repeated control and sometimes violence. If the survivor responds to the aggressor with an emotional reaction, that is not mutual abuse. That is just the partner responding to the abuse that's being exerted onto them. Unfortunately, because this is so often misunderstood, when that person comes forward with claims of abuse, they are either often blamed or not believed solely because of the way that they had a very human reaction to the abuse that was being done to them. Feminists ask for equality, here you go. Equal rights, equal lefts, baby. And you're gonna keep seeing cases in the news where you see these, you know, these guys die because they were told they can never hit back. You know, it's interesting because a lot of abuse of women blame the abuse on the men when really a lot of times um, they were protecting themselves. Irregardless of any of this, Pearl still believes that women should get married as young as possible. Why, they can't, if you survey men between the age, if you survey men between the ages of 20 and 80, they're all the most attracted to 22 year olds. I peaked three years ago, and <laughs> and 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 you guys did too. Whether you, yeah, whether like yeah. at 20, 22, 23, and 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 this is men between the age of 20 and 80. So what men value is purity, youth, and fertility. And so, like, what would you be able to offer to a guy? So that's something I've heard you say. Obviously, you, you strongly mm -hmm. believe that, right? That women who are past the age of 22, their value goes down. Mm -hmm. And um, men, all men just want to want young girls. Mm -hmm. So I guess what, what's the what's the message behind this? What is who are you speaking to and what is it that? I mean, it's just to? true. Men do want younger women. And so your message to them is mm -hmm. nothing you're just saying that because it's true i mean why i mean not just say the sun big, is hot? i mean don't don't wait till you know 35 to get married get married as young as you can right get uh, married as young as I, you can yeah pearl also doubles down on her claims that some aspects of slavery are embellished and refuses to comment further on the matter or rebuke any of her past comments in what way was slavery made to seem more horrible than it was um, and I don't, I don't really want to go into this too much because we're kind of past this, but I was quoting a Thomas Sowell book. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. So do you agree with that premise that story was embellished or no? Um, I think that there are parts that are under embellished and there are parts that are over embellished. I think it just depends That's what we're talking so about. That's so interesting. I've got to know what was over embellished about slavery. <sighs> just like one example, I'm dying to know. Hmm. I just think. Are you retracting that? I just, I, I'd really just rather not. This portion of the debate leads her to end the call early. Okay, so you disavow. Just disavow it then. That's easy. Just say, I don't think. Slavery was embellished. I mean, that's super easy. That's like a layup. 
I think there are certain facts that you're not allowed to talk about. I don't really want to talk about it. Okay, I really appreciate you having me on, um, but I'm, I'm going to go. Thank you. George. Thank you. W- okay, I, I appreciate you. Okay. She hung have, up. Have a good night. Uh, have a good night. Uh, have a good night. Uh, she hung up. People were surprised by just how ill-prepared Pearl seemed to come to the interview, which made them question if Pearl genuinely holds these beliefs or if, as others in her life have claimed, it's all just a grift to make as much money as possible by being intentionally inflammatory and controversial. I think she's actually a grifter, like in the true sense in that (laughs) the one thing she always talks about is like how life is not fair for men dating is unfair for men she literally just echoes stuff that like fresh and fit and andrew tate say because she's like a token woman Pearl just didn't seem very passionate about her beliefs and when she was pressed by ethan she would oftentimes change her tune h3 executive producer daniel believes much of pearl's online persona is all fake my takeaway from the last two days of looking into her i don't know this for sure i know you didn't necessarily agree with me ethan but i think it's all fake i think she's cynical leaning into it to get traction on the internet. I think it's all fake. Even those within the red pill manosphere realm began to believe that Pearl was grifting. On the looksmax.org forum, which looksmaxing is a practice that originated on manosphere message boards, a poster says, anti-feminist pearly things is definitely a grifter. I don't think Pearl Davis is completely fake in her beliefs, but she takes the most reactionary statements to create some kind of controversy. She clashes with traditional Christian conservatives trad wives with some of the things she says. I hate to say pick me, but she does come across that way. Even those within the manosphere call Pearl a pick me, which is very sad. I think it's possible to believe some things, but also exaggerate beliefs for effect and get views. Pearl Davis is really a provocateur rather than someone for the trad movement. It's come to light more and more just how much those within Pearl's own circles dislike her, whether they disagree with her viewpoints but for the time being it's like okay at least you know the the there should be mandatory dna testing at birth no i don't know why you okay because it's calling my wife a whore to do that but did she stutter (laughs) yes yes she did or say they wouldn't want to date her because she's too masculine and argumentative do you know why pearl is available Because even though she says the right things that men resonate with, she's masculine as hell. Men like feminine women. Pearl is an advocate for what men want, but she's not what men want. Feminine women do not go online and sit on podcasts and argue with men all day long. (laughs) That is not what men want. Those who post outrage content are at least able to find some small community that accepts them and loves them, but Pearl hasn't really been able to find that. People within the manosphere or debating circles distance themselves from her. Men that she's wanting so badly to be picked from refuse to choose her. Pearl is now completely isolated herself from anyone who will choose her or accept her. And it's a path that she's willingly walked down and put herself on. So it is really hard to feel sorry for her about it. Ethan was not the only known person who challenged Pearl on her actions. Piers Morgan went in on Pearl for a controversial and nonsensical video that she released. And with Piers Morgan himself being such a controversial figure in the UK, if he's making a lot of sense compared to you, then you know you have problems. As most of you know, in the summer of 2023, Colleen Ballinger's botched ukulele non-apology video for her many controversies went viral. Pearl, seemingly wanting to ride that attention wave, posted a video on YouTube titled, Why Can't We Talk About the Jews? Where she played the guitar while singing about Holocaust conspiracy theories. But this week, she's facing a major backlash of posting a song titled Why Can't We Talk About the Jews before later deleting it. Why can't we talk about them Without getting kicked off of YouTube Now I'm not saying 
was a good guy But I kind of want to know why She even claimed to think that some of the out there theories are right Now there's all these crazy theories And the more they talk I think maybe they're right I can't even listen to the convo. But like most of Pearl's content that garners a lot of backlash, Pearl can't handle the heat, and Pearl would go on to delete this video 24 hours after posting. But of course, many people recorded this video and started spreading it across social media. Here's Morgan then invited her onto his talk show where he pushes back on her and her video fairly strongly. Huh? Did you find, you find it funny? I mean, you know the backlash to it. I mean, you, you deleted it. You obviously thought you shouldn't have posted it. Mm -hmm. She has millions of viewers on the internet and on social media, and she's complaining about being canceled. The crisis is that this is what is profitable now. This clickbait, this type of racial incitement is profitable on the internet. Pearl will disappear. She will disappear like many others before her because this is something that's just a moment in time. She's like a train wreck. It's like a car crash. You know, for example, you can't, you know, you shouldn't be looking at it, but you can't take your eyes off it. While Piers Morgan in this circumstance seems to stand against what Pearl says and gives her a lot of pushback, Pearl had previously appeared on the Piers Morgan talk show a couple of times and received very minimal pushback for her controversial views from Piers Morgan. But feminists have ruined marriage for the people that actually believe in marriage. The sanctity of marriage also rely on the woman being a virgin, so you wouldn't be able to get married. I, what do you what do you mean? Well, you've spoken quite openly about how you're not a virgin. And so if you want to preserve that sanctity of marriage, I, think, you know, you know, and I, and I, I just think that you're upholding standards that you don't I, actually I, live I, by. I, this is the problem we have with women. Like women, men tend to be better people than us. Yeah, they really do. Giving her a platform to spread her views and her brand. Here's Morgan hadn't really held her accountable for any of her statements until now. Pearl blamed a lot of the backlash that she received from this video on cancel culture. But what Pearl didn't seem to realize is that she can say whatever she wants online because she has said whatever she wants to say online. It's the natural consequence of what she says that she can't seem to handle when she receives pushback or backlash, which is why Pearl consistently deletes all of her older videos, wants to avoid confrontational conversations whenever she's confronted about her behavior. After Pearl's appearance on the show, she went on an angry Twitter rant claiming she was censored by Piers Morgan and his team. Why does at Piers Morgan believe in censorship with a platform called Uncensored? She also claimed that the producers lied to her and said, that it was going to be a pro-free speech debate and that they ambushed her with talk about her controversial video. Piers responded saying, you did an incredibly stupid thing with your now deleted video. As I said to you after our interview, own your mistake and apologize for the offense you caused. You get on and Pierce um, says I'm gonna go hard on you this time, something like that. And I'm like, oh really? And I'm shocked because his producers have said all week he's on my side. So I'm like, what? It's like, I'm thinking this is a free speech general conversation. I could show you these emails with someone else on it. And <laughs> then I get on and I'm like, oh no, this is an ambush, which they, they promised me they wouldn't do. I was like, Pierce, what about our promise? I think we should start calling this censored with Pierce Morgan. And I'd also like to announce that I'm starting a network of my own. I'm calling it the Audacity Network because we have the audacity to have on all different types of people. Pearl just wants a platform to spread harmful narratives with little pushback, which is not how social media works. It may be how very selective echo chambers work, but once you reach the broader space of social media, that's not how it works. Hence why Pearl announced 
after this controversy, the creation of her own platform where she can have her own space to say her own narratives with zero pushback. And maybe Pearl assumed that these controversial viral moments were going to lead to a ton of clicks and views, which would channel easily into a business venture, as all of her controversial predecessors have been able to easily accomplish. But at the end of the day, Pearl may have been missing one key factor, likability. Just having enough likability for a small subsect of people to want to support your business venture. Because some people can click on a short segment of a video and like what you have to say, but will they like your personality enough to follow you and continue to buy what you're selling? For Pearl, it seems that was her ultimate downfall. So Pearl went on to create the Audacity Network in 2023 with the goal of, in Pearl's words, being like a TV network, but for YouTube. So this year I started a network. And what the network is, is it kind of like the way I saw it was sort of like a TV network, but on YouTube where we have different shows that we host and different. I'm just a really creative person. So it's funny. I never really look at work as working. I mean, like occasionally I do, but to me, I'm just having a good time. Pearl was posting this video for the purpose of trying to scout internet talent so that they could apply for the Audacity Network. But also, they have to pitch the show idea to her because the talent that she signs to the Audacity Network can't just do exactly what she does. Um. Now we're looking to sign talents. Now, guys, the issue I'm getting is you guys keep applying with the same exact show that I do. So you'll be like, Pearl, I want to do a show where we bring in people and talk about relationships. I'm like, well, guys, that's the exact same thing. So what am I looking for in a talent? Um, someone that has a unique idea for a show that is a self-starter, so a hard worker, and they have like original ideas of things that they can do. Yeah, I think that's like pretty much. Damn, if they're the talent and they're putting together the entire concept of an added show, what are you doing? The Audacity Network homepage advertises itself by saying, dive into the ultimate media hub where freedom of speech and expression isn't just a right, it's a vibe. Break free from the norm as we champion diverse perspectives, challenge the status quo, and spark a revolution in dynamic content. It's more than just a platform, it's a movement. The thing is, you have to pay to gain access to these vibes. You could pay $10 a month or $80 a year. The Audacity Network also claims to give you access to exclusive courses, but as of now, there's only one course available, and that's the How to Make People Feel Comfortable course, because Pearl is very skilled at that. People all across the internet are made extremely comfortable by Pearl's inclusive viewpoints and statements. I mean, everyone knows that the easiest way to make someone be comfortable is to always be against them. Choose by always. Pearl has her own page on the Audacity Network site, showcasing the variety of what I can only assume is riveting, entertaining, and informative content at every turn. On the platform are the pages of her other cohorts, Christine, which just to note, the Christine Grace Smith of her name, which is a very average white woman name, is trademarked. How on earth can someone even trademark a name like Christine Grace Smith? How did you run that by the trademark office? And now can no one else in the world be named Christine Grace Smith lest they face legal repercussions from this angry looking white lady who will go after them and try and sue them? And if so, is she maybe doing a service to the world, saving others from the name of Christine Grace Smith? I'm so if your name is Christine Grace Smith, I'm so 
sorry. There's also a page for the employee Troy. And his page looks like he's some sort of true crime novel author. And this is his big writer's debut, which sounds way more fun and interesting than what his content actually is, which is really just cringy pickup artistry. And lastly, there's Nazarin, whose page looks like it doesn't belong here. It gives off cool witchy vibes, but in actuality, her page is dedicated to tinfoil hat theories that your uncle probably found off of a Facebook page. So how captivating is this chosen talent of Pearl's? Well, about as captivating as Pearl herself. Troy has about as much charisma as my left toenail. Though to be fair, it is a very charismatic toenail. Troy is a dating expert, a pickup artist who helps men pick up women off of the streets. Literally, that's where he does most of his content. So let's watch Troy expertly navigate the streets, flirting with his small mic flailing in hand, a camera awkwardly aimed somewhere nearby. What does this Riz genius have to offer to the world? Okay, because we're in Polanco now. You're obviously a very classy lady. You're obviously, you're obviously, you know, used to a certain kind of lifestyle, so you'd want to maintain that, right? You, but you're, you're, you're obviously a very pure, innocent woman and very, very, very good principle. So this is this is what we like. This is what we like. Traveling around, doing some work and stuff. And uh, you tonight, you go to the party or what is your plan? Oh, nothing. Okay. Steen Grace Smith, TM. I can't help but admit that I have a little bit of a soft spot for. A bit of a personal bias as a fellow video essayist. When I watch some of her content, I can't help but be like, I can fix you. Because she will actually do some research and talk about some studies, at least more than any of Pearl's content that I've ever seen. And there's a genuine feeling that she really does want to help women with her content. Pair bonding is a biological, neurological mechanism. It was first arrived in 1987 by people called Hassan and Shaver. When an individual chooses to engage in transient sex, breaking bond after bond from each new partner that they're with. The brain forms a new synaptic map of one night stands. And this pattern of attach break, attach break becomes the new normal for the individual. There's an article that explains this. It's really easy to digest. Though she tries to boil down really complex topics in really simple ways. And at the very end of her video, she comes to a very disturbing opposite world wrong conclusion. Like after so much research, still at the very end, her analysis is that women are in the wrong, feminism evil, and you have to submit further to men. It's these same feminists that preach about female empowerment as an excuse to indulge in promiscuous behavior that also shame the ideal of being a wife. And where's the love there? If you can't already tell, I do not agree with anything that feminism alleges to stand for. If I show too much of Nazarin's content, YouTube will not like that. Suffice to say, she believes pretty much every out there thing you can think of. And her Twitter is a very interesting place. Um, <laughs> trying to make us eat fake meat and bugs. Can you say your name one more time? Nazarin. Nazarin. Yeah. I'm Sneeko. Sneeko. It was great to meet you. You too. Nice to meet you. When perusing the Audacity Network website, the message board is pretty hilarious because it just showcases who has actually purchased from the Audacity Network. And first off, it is not many people. And the people that have are technologically not savvy or from an older population. Like there is someone who couldn't figure out how to view the content in the Audacity Network. Another person who talked about being 65 and how Pearl is a breath of fresh air to them. The Audacity Network also has an alarming merch store that sells merchandise with text such as she belongs in the streets. The Audacity Network itself and its talent has mostly women in it. So yeah, that's a good look. But the funniest thing about this merch is that it's another person's tweet on it. I understand if if you're selling merch with your own tweet on it maybe but the she belongs in the streets merch features a tweet from future it just has nothing to do with Pearl and the Audacity Network, if I'm not mistaken. They also sell what they call whale merch, a callback to when Pearl called other women whales, where the t-shirts 
describe different types of whales and then on it has entitled whale beware on the audacity network merch store pearl has also sold the women shouldn't vote t-shirts all right what up guys today i have my women shouldn't vote t-shirt these t-shirts are the best in the game super soft amazing you will never find a t-shirt like this in your life and it's amazing because i go out and I'm on the streets and everyone comes up to me and just asks me where I bought this t-shirt. You can get yours too at the audacity network dot store. That's the audacity network dot store. Get your t-shirt. No, God, please, no. It's just all around a class act production, obviously. I mean, at least I guess they can say it's um original merchandise, but not even because they're selling a shirt with someone else's tweet on it. The Audacity Network overall has no delusions about who they are. There are four white people with what they call diverse opinions. As they said via their homepage, break free from the norm as we champion in diverse perspectives. Both the Audacity Network and the merch store are copyrighted by Just Pearly Things LLC. So the network is not owned by a larger company with Pearl just the face of it. It's Pearl's own company that she's trying to run. Though, are we sure that she isn't just running the company for a government grant or something? I mean, there's got to be some other dude that's actually running things apart from Pearl, if you ask me. Well, though Pearl had dreams of running the Audacity Network like a TV network for YouTube, very soon after starting the network, virtually all of Pearl's other avenues for making income went up in flames. Pearl's YouTube channel ended up getting fully demonetized. Pearl went straight to Twitter claiming she had no idea why her channel was demonetized and that it happened out of the blue with no warning from YouTube. Pearl is indeed playing dumb. But according to others, there have been some claims that Pearl tried to take her YouTube content too far and, well, received consequences from YouTube. Let's look at this complaint here that was sent from a young lady who was complaining to YouTube about the exploitation of her sister. So she at Pearl and says, the TikToker slash YouTuber Pearl stopped my 15 year old sister and her school friends on the street to ask them invasive questions about s on her YouTube channel. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. She made several cut downs of the videos and she has subjected them to a boost from the hashtag red pill community. Now, this is something that's very important because that's harassment. That's against terms of service. So get ready for a daggone community guideline strike out there, Pearl. Mm -hmm. And Pearl even kept this video in question up after all the backlash. Pearl even seemed to back up this person's claims on Twitter, responding to their post and saying that it was them and their reports who got their channel demonetized. I have never even heard of this situation till this week. You have gotten my channel demonetized by MASH reporting me, which affects the 15 people that work for my company who have families and mouths to feed. Then you falsely accuse me of asking some chick from a year ago about sex. Notice the use of chick to describe what was alleged to be a 15 year old girl. I actually went and found the video right here. I'm not going to show the girls in the video, but you'll see here that she writes in the title. These girls were so clueless. You will also see that the girls were in the intro or the teaser of the video. So there seems to be some admission that these were girls and not women. Of course, this was not the only terrible thing that Just Pearly Things has posted to YouTube. Pearl has posted and then quickly deleted probably an innumerable amount of things that could qualify as demonetizable offenses. And she's hosted a lot of people on her YouTube channel that YouTube has made clear that it does not want associated or on their platform. But this situation may have been the straw that broke the camel's back. And 
after Pearl got demonetized, her viewership plummeted. The very little social media power that she held in her hands slipping from her fingers. Since then, Pearl has tried to reapply for monetization, but YouTube is not putting up with it. But this leads to Pearl tweeting via YouTuber O'Shea Duke Jackson. Time for re-monetization early February. I was demonetized for saying the word. We'll block that. Since then, I've let go of three employees and lost over 100K. I don't know if that's 100,000 subscribers or $100,000. YouTube gave me zero strikes, zero warnings. They play with people's livelihoods. So with no other income, Pearl is probably relying more and more on the Audacity network. But with her YouTube channel down the drain, her TikTok accounts getting constantly banned, Pearl has very few social media avenues to actually promote the Audacity network. But the money that Pearl has been making has likely taken a huge nosedive. All those employees Pearl tried to exploit, Pearl is now slowly letting go. What was supposed to be a grift that would last Pearl at least a few years so that she could get her network off the ground and capitalize off of outrage marketing died out almost as quickly as it started. Now, in a desperate attempt to grasp at Pearl's slipping platform, since she lost her ability to monetize her content, and most people believe her to be a grifter, lending less credibility to the things that she says, Pearl has gone full-blown troll mode, creating badly composed songs on her daily show in hopes that they go viral online. Be the villain if that's what you gotta believe. They criticize me at all costs I know maybe that hope is lost There's more to gain from lying than telling the truth So I'll be the villain I love the comment that says the tortured pick me department I'll be the demon if that's what you need I'll be the villain if that's what you got easy to believe that what you say online has no impact. I think that many people who end up in this sort of grifting through spreading a harmful rhetoric path to con themselves into believing that selling themselves out for a grift won't be harmful. That because they're only one person, their words and their statements couldn't possibly have that much impact. Especially if other people are doing it, why shouldn't they try and make a quick buck and capitalize off of the grift too. But now more than ever, it's important to have balanced conversations where all groups of people can be respected, where we look beyond the ruse of those who are making shocking statements just for the sole purpose of grabbing our attention. People who are making enemies out of everyone for the purpose of making a quick buck at the expense of our cultural well-being. Much of the reason why Pearl's platform failed is because she didn't understand that in order to gain some sort of loyal following, you still have to stand for something, apart from just hating everything, because those who stand for nothing can fall for anything, which is what we seem to have seen recently with the fall of some of the biggest influencers in the manosphere. That's all for the video on Just Pearly Things. Thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video. As always, I appreciate you and I hope that it was an enjoyable watch. And if you were doing something like studying, working, doing chores, I hope this was entertaining to help pass the time. Thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. If you want to get started on Rocket Money for free, go to rocketmoney.com slash cruelworldhappymind or click the link in the description. Also, thank you so much to my team for helping putting together this video. I hope you all are doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.